Hello everybody, Dark Skeleton here, and in this video I want to show you guys a super budget mage deck that's specifically targeted towards Year of the Raven, so the sets that are about to be rotating out are not included in this deck. And it's essentially just a very basic tempo mage elemental deck. Uh, the reason you would go with elementals is A, many of the elementals that are strong are from the Ungoral set, which is still going to be played more here of the Raven. And also, many of the elemental cards, which are pretty good, are actually common or rare. So you don't really need a lot of dust to craft a deck like this. So in the deck, we have Breath of Sintragosa, which is common, and that's the main reason it's being included. Um, as a pretty basic and cheap removal spell that can sometimes help you establish the board in the early game. Um, in the meta right now, there is a lot of aggro decks, so having cards to play early on will be pretty important if you want to actually survive until turn 5 or later. Um, in addition to Breath of Sinjigosa, we have Cold Wraith down here, which is actually a pretty powerful card on its own, but the main reason Cold Wraith hasn't seen a lot of competitive play is simply that Frost cards aren't really that strong in terms of a tempo deck, so uh, generally speaking, you don't really want to play something like Cold Wraith with cards like Blizzard. You would just play those big frost effects in order to control the board rather than trying to tempo out a decent minion like a 3 mana 3 4 and draw a card. But uh, along with Cold Wraith, it's also included Frostbolt and Water Elemental, both of which have the ability to do freeze effects which is part of the reason they're included. Uh, Frostball is just a really strong basic card in general and does make its way into many, if not all, mage decks. And then Water Elemental is a solid body as well. 4 mana, 3, 6, also an elemental, which means it's going to synergize with the deck. And the Freeze synergizes with Cold Wraith as well, and can help stop some aggro decks, because Freeze effects mean that they're not going to be able to attack, so it's just all around a uh, decent package there. Um, now, next up is Firefly. A card that is usually played in decks like um, Shaman, or Evolve Shaman more specifically, where they can really benefit from having a lot of weak bodies on the board. But it's also not too bad in any elemental deck, simply because uh, with one Firefly, you actually get two elementals, which can allow you to trigger other effects like Steam Surge down here, or Serpent of Callus mostly. Um, we'll talk about those more in a bit. Mana Worm is a very powerful mage card, always has been, it's a common for the basic set. And basically any uh, mage deck that's not specifically a very heavy control deck would want to play Mana Worm because it's just a super powerful card. Archaeologist here is a uh, common from one of the recent sets. It's a uh, 2 mana 2 3 and allows you to draw a secret from your deck, uh, making having secrets at all in your deck a lot better, simply because you can draw them for free. Arcane Intellect, uh, draw two cards, just more power to keep going if you end up against a control opponent. Um, so let's talk about the secrets here. The Explosive Runes, um, this is three mana, deals six damage to a minion when it's played and any access to its hero. Normally you see this kind of card in something like Secrets Mage, so the fact that you're drawing secrets and also having secrets in the deck, you could say, oh, well there is a little bit of Secrets Mage in the deck, but it's really missing a lot of components to go that route. Um, now the reason that there's only one explosive rings instead of two is because, well, it's a rare, so to meet that 1000 dust requirement, you'd have to settle for a common secret. But if you actually have two explosive runes, I'd probably swap one, ex uh, one frozen clone down here out for explosive runes. Now, frozen clone is a card that's not really often played, and I think that's why it's actually good, because uh, the fact that no one ever expects you to play Frozen Clone means that you can often duplicate cards that are pretty good. So, people might play around Mirror Entity with something like a draw a card or discover a card minion, thinking that they're only going to give you like a 1 1 or a 2 2. But with Frozen Clone, those minions that might have good battle cry effects actually become useful for you anyway. So it's uh, a good way to keep going, and the fact that you get to draw that off of Archaeologist means as long as you get enough time to play these cards out, it's a lot of value that you can actually achieve. So I do like Frozen Clone, but generally I think I would swap one out for Explosive Runes here. Um, kind of up to you. I don't think it's too strongly favored either way, but Explosive Runes is generally considered the stronger secret, especially for Dark 
So next up, Tar Creeper. This is a 3 mana 1 5 elemental. It has 3 attack on your opponent's turn, which makes it a uh, good wall. Really good at fighting aggro decks, of which there are many in battle right now. And also, um, it's an elemental, so once again, it can trigger your elemental required effects, which we'll talk about now. Steam Surger. Which I would put two in the deck if you have two, but once again it's a rare, so meeting that minimum dust requirement. Uh, so it is a four mana, five four. That'll play if you played an elemental last turn, add a flame geyser to your hand. And if you don't already know, flame geyser is this. It's a two mana deal to damage spell, add a one two elemental to your hand, and that elemental is the same thing you get off of firefly. So also handy to have for triggering more elemental effects. So the only remaining requiring an elemental effect in the deck at the moment is Servant of Chalismos times two. If you played an elemental last turn, discover an elemental, which is uh, kind of cool because there are some elementals like Baron Geddon or, uh, shoot, what's his name? Let me take a look here. Uh, Anomalous. Which are big cards, and you normally want to want to put them in your deck. But if you know that the game is going to go on a long time, you can just simply uh, pick this off off of a uh, servant of Kalismos, put it on the board as a big threat. Um, basically, because it has death that'll deal eight damage to all minions. Your opponent is forced to play around it, whether that's removing it, ignoring it completely, or uh, only putting one minion on the board. In any case. Um, it's actually not too bad to get in specific matchups which might be going long, like against the control board. So, uh, the fact that you have a lot of versatility with these discover effects from the Servant of Gallus is actually not bad. So, all in all, you have Cold Place, which can draw cards, Arcane Intellect, which can draw cards, Archaeologist, which will draw cards, including Frozen Clone, which will give you more cards, and the Servant of Gallus, which will give you more cards. So there's a lot of uh, card draw and sustain in the deck. It looks like it's actually not that strong in the late game, but there's enough minions in here and enough draw that you can actually go for quite a while, as you'll see in some of the games I'm also putting in this video. So the last cards to touch on here, Fireball deals 6 damage, uh, can hit face, can hit minions, um, just a strong card in general, and it's free from the basic set. Polymorph, uh, 4 mana, transform a minion into a 1 1 sheep. Uh, generally not as strong unless you're playing a heavy control deck, but it's solid enough to include in a cheap deck like this. Um, but probably would be replaced by other cards if you have other ones available. And then Flame Strike, 7 mana, deal 4 damage to all minions. Generally considered a pretty strong effect. Also from the basic set, uh, doesn't hurt to include it. But uh, one more card we will talk about here right now is Firelands Portal. So this card is rotating out, and that's the reason it's not included in the set. But if you do the introductory mission for Karazhan, which is free, does not require any purchases, you will get Firelands Portal, which is a very, very strong card. And I would definitely put two of these in the deck. Um, not sure which cards I would cut. Probably to start would be cards like uh, Breath of Sindragosa. You might cut Firefly, but I'm not sure about that. Let's see, cutting Polymorph probably for Firelands Portal. Yeah, I'd probably do that. Or you could even cut Flame Strike because it's not really a control deck, so you'd rather have something that's a little bit more tempo oriented, like Firelands Portal, where it summons five cost minions, than something that just clears the board. But kind of up to you, so hopefully that gives you some ideas of where you can go with the deck. So that's basically the gist of how the deck works. Um, I'll also include a link to the Hearthpone write-up if you want a little bit more information, but let's go ahead and get into the actual games that I will comment on and explain how the deck works. Okay, so currently the matter for Mage is Secret Mage, so we'll see if we can beat this guy who's got 500 plus wins with this very basic deck. So we have to assume he's going to be playing some kind of secret mage, which means we have to fight for board as hard as possible, which means we keep cards like Man and Worm, which are just good in general, and Tar Creeper, which are taunts. Now the other possibility is he's actually playing some kind of Frostlich Jaina mage. So if you don't know Frostlich Jaina, when you play it, it summons a water elemental and gives all of her elementals lifesteal, which means once Frost... Uh, Frostlich Jaina comes down, it's actually very hard to be a control mage, so you have to actually defeat her before that happens. So in either case, we have to go very aggressive here in order to win. Um, Frostbolt, okay. That doesn't really say too much. 
So in this case, we could coin out a Torah Creeper, a Explosive Runes, or a Water Elemental. I think, because I don't want to waste the mana, I will just go ahead and play the Explosive Runes. It actually gives us kind of tempo, because whatever he plays is going to take 6 damage. Um, Doomsayer would kind of play around that, but I don't think he would actually use Doomsayer like that, so we'll see what he plays. I'm guessing it's a Secret Mage, though. Oh look, it's a Secret Mage. Huh. Good guess. So he's going to play a Secret here, I would assume. Yep. And we'll play Tar Creeper into that. So this is going to be one of two cards, Explosive Runes or, um, uh, what's it called, Counterspell. Because you know for a fact he's just playing the meta deck. So this is where you kind of have to wonder, like, okay, it's a Thousand Dust Dock deck. So this is kind of where you have to wonder, it's a Thousand Dust deck. Can it be a deck that's actually considered, like, something along the lines of Tier 2? Tier 2, Tier 1? I I'm not actually sure on that legendary. Um, so that's 100% counterspell, so we're basically not going to be playing Excuse any spells for a while. Um, instead we'll click Servant of Kalismos and get some value. And we can just burn something like our Human Intellect later when we want to get rid of the counterspell. Uh, Leyland Manipulator, is that good? Maybe not good enough. I don't think the Leyland Manipulator is that super good in this deck, but... It's worth mentioning, it's a decent card to consider if you want to keep improving this deck and make it a little bit more expensive. I think I'll actually take the Pyrus here, and I'll hit that 2-3 just so he has to basically fire blast this guy. If he has Aluneth, which is a legendary that secret mages like to play, um, that will be a problem for us. If he doesn't, I mean we'll have to see. But probably this Arcane Intellect is going to go straight to burning that Counterspell, and then we'll actually use something like Frostbolt in order to control the board, just tossing yeah, away the two cards now. Okay, we can burn that Explosive Runes with a Firefly. What? It might not actually be Explosive Runes. Some of these Secret Mages actually play Ice Block as well. So, let's just try to burn both. So, let's test with the Firefly first. So there'll be an explosive range there. And we assumed that the second one's kind of spell, but it might be Ice Block. Okay, so now we just Frostbolt that, hit that, and uh, the Super Mage isn't actually doing too hot. I wonder what he's doing wrong, because, you know, that's a really strong attack, especially against something with two frozen clones. Okay, so he's going to draw a secret, and that's going to be Counterspell or Ice Block. So, the thing about playing against decks like this is you have to remember exactly what cards they're playing. Really? Probably Pyros, Cold Wraith, King, I'm thinking. And we just won't play into that Counterspell. Oh. Mirror Entity? Okay. Really, Mirror Entity. Okay, I didn't, I didn't expect the Mirror Entity, and that was actually a misplay on my part. I should have given him the Cold Wraith instead, because now he's going to go Pyros, and that's all kinds of iffy for us. I mean, it's not too big of a deal, it's kind of slow. If we draw into Polymorph, then we can be alright. Actually, we'll probably just let him trade too. In this case, I'm just going to play the Manor Worm, Pyros, and I think a Breath of Syndragosa that. So, you know, not actually that bad of a common, because it's one less than Frostbolt, and if there's only one guy on the field, the random effect of it doesn't really matter. So, like, if he plays more stuff... Or if he actually plays a secret here, then we have to test around it. <laughs> It might be uh, it might be a second counter spell. I don't even know what he's playing. Your entity is not standard and secret mage. So we'll definitely test with flame elemental first, and we'll go from there. 
Okay, mere, uh, frozen clone. Really? That's some random stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna flame strike this guy. And he has a Pyros in his hand, which is a 10 mana minion, but if he basically plays it, he's dead, so... You know, he's kind of gonna be dead in his hand for a while. Why would he do that? Okay, so there's two possibilities. One, uh, he has a Pyroblast in his hand. The other possibility is he thinks I'm going to trade into it, which I'm not because he's dead. But yeah, it, it's possible he could have been playing Pyro Blast. Kind of a weird take on the deck, to be honest, for a secret mage. So the general idea here is, if you're going up against aggro, you try to not die. <laughs> because against aggro, you don't need the value. Don't worry about drawing extra cards, throw away your arcane intellect, just try to survive. Watch okay, so for this match, most of the rogues I've actually seen people playing recently have been Kingsbane rogues, so that means you have to kill him before he gets out of control with his Kingbane. Kingsbane. So keeping cards like Man and Worm are really good against Rogue. Uh, the other possibility is that he's playing Quest Rogue, which once again you have to finish him off before the quest becomes too much of an issue. So Man and Worm is pretty much the ideal card to have in your opening hand, as it often is. So we're going to play Man and Worm turn 1. Turn 2 is going to be either Tar Creeper or possibly Explosive Runes. It could also be Fire Blast, but, you know, I think that might kind of be too slow. I'll play Tar Creeper, acknowledging that he might have King's Bane plus a weapon buff. It's kind of hard to win this kind of match, because this isn't really an aggressive deck. Yeah, or Sap, but, you know, that's okay. So I'll replay the Tar Creeper just because it's kind of annoying for him to deal with. So, in this case, um... Probably have to just play the, uh, the Old Wraith, I think. An alternative is it could polymorph that just to deny him a card draw, but I don't think that's actually I super wonder. good. Um, what I will do in this case is actually play Explosive Friends, and the idea here is that by doing this, I would actually be able to play the Cold Wraith, possibly with the card draw on the next turn. And he might be afraid to play a spell. Wow, that is incredibly ballsy. Why would he do that if there was the possibility of me having a counter spell there? I don't know. Okay, so one option would be to just try to burn his face down, but he is definitely going to heal with that. Better option, uh, ping that card draw, and just play a Tar Creeper, because sooner or later he has to go for the Tar Creeper. So the idea is generally we don't want to run out of stuff, but we also have to finish them off eventually. And him having stuff like that is a bit of a problem. If we frostbolt his face, he won't actually be able to use his weapon, which is pretty good. In addition to that, we can play the Cold Wraith to draw a card. And now we can use Breath of Sindragosa in order to kill his second guy. So that turns out pretty good for us. If we actually drew and draw into something like Fireball, then there's a good chance he'll just kind of be dead. Alright, well. You know, technically fire, two fireballs cost eight mana, so it doesn't exactly work like that. So... We might be in trouble here simply because we don't have enough damage to finish him off. So I'm just gonna kill his, his guy there, and um, kinda hope for the best in terms of next turn draws. The frozen clone might throw him off, he might be worried about what kind of card that would be. If it was a second explosive runes, that would be considerably better. 
So he gives us two of those, which is probably fine. Wow. Okay, so if we draw some damage here, probably be in good shape. I'm actually going to double polymorph these guys, because I really don't want him to get a buff on his uh, weapon there. That's the main thing. You have to keep the weapon from getting over buffed. As long as you can do that, it shouldn't be too bad. And uh, Water Elemental is actually a really good card for this kind of matchup. So he's going to heal for three a turn now, as long as he's not frozen, that's okay. We draw Fireball, game's over. Um, we've got to put as much pressure on him as we can. So, cards he might play here are Vanish, which means we would have to replay our minions. Gonna be an issue. The assassinate, also not great. Yeah, he's just gonna kind of try to put himself out of range. So, we might not be able to finish him in time. Oh, that's actually pretty good. So, steam surgery. Because we played elementals, we can get extra cards here. Um, frozen clone. Not gonna bother with that. Have to play more minions. So this card right here is 2 extra damage that you can use on his face, so that's 8 damage in hand and about 12 on board, but he's probably going to vanish, so it doesn't really matter. But, something worth noting, if he does vanish, he can replay the Steam Surge. Okay, Blade Flurry doesn't actually work with the King's Bane lifesteal though, so... Not gonna work out exactly as he wants there. Hopefully we get a minion. Um, that's also acceptable. But we can't we have one damage off this turn, so I'm actually going to play Frozen Clone to get some minions from him next turn. And I'm just gonna try to do the most damage I can over two turns. By having Fireball Fireball and then King as the finisher, so if he draws Kingsbane with one of his cards this turn, which is very, very likely, we're once again in trouble. Um, if he doesn't, then there's a good chance he's going to not go here. Yeah, of course he has it. It's kind of weird that he wouldn't play any minions there. So, we'll just see what we can get. Okay, Servant of Charisma is not exactly super useful. We'll just play this as a 3-4, so you can't actually kill that unless he uses a second card. Sap is fine. He's probably not going to have enough cards to deal with this. So just playing as many cards as we can. Have to keep up the board pressure, which is also kind of how you beat uh, like typical control X ones that might have really big minions that would eventually shut you out if you can't keep up the pressure. Worth mentioning here, um, because of those, um, the Servant of Calismos can be double played here. So we might actually do that. Can't really deal with that, don't really care to. Oh, well, now we can, I guess. Yeah, okay, the, wait, hold on. If you're holding any cards that didn't start in your hand, reduce the cost by two. Hmm. Tough call, because th those would be uh, two mana uh, elven minstrels, but I don't think they're particularly useful. Could also use Ice Walker on his face, so he can't actually attack. Both are pretty good, you know? Let me see here. What's more likely to win the game? I wonder. I'm thinking the Ice Walker, but at the same time, that needs to die. 
I'm gonna go with the Fire Plume Phoenix. But it's it's definitely worth considering the Ice Walker there. I mean, freezing the face when his whole deck revolves around the weapon does kind of help, you know? It's probably gonna draw the King's Bane somehow this time. Well, not guaranteed. So, 12 damage from hand. Uh, 13 if you count the hero power, and 8 on the board. Uh, I think that's 21 exact, so he's actually dead. So, managed to get there. And I can't count, oh my god. <laughs> okay, uh, more of the story, make sure you can count, but probably still a win. That, that was actually a huge blunder there. Oh man, that's pretty lame. Okay, so he drew a little bit bad. Probably not an ideal deck list for him to feel like he was missing some of the weapon buff cards he should have. Anyway, um, that would be an example of how you play against a control deck. You never really run out of stuff playing this kind of budget uh, elemental deck because you have cards like Servant of Palismos, Arcane Intellect, Cold Wraith. So really, you can do okay versus aggro, but against control it's also not bad because you'll never run out of soft. 